As creators, we should always be looking for ways to improve our work. So I'm gonna share with you a few cool creations that you can use to make your After Effects work pro in no time. We're gonna break down this entire file in five techniques, so be sure to download our project files. And our very first technique, I'm gonna show you how to create these really cool lines that can be used to bring some detail to your comps. What we do is select the pen tool here and just draw a straight line across our composition like this. Make sure the fill is turned off and the stroke is set to solid color. Then all we need to do is add a trim path to our shape layer. And then we'll keyframe the end from 100% to 0%. Once you have your line animation, go to Effect, Distort, and grab Wave Warp. We'll set the wave height to 100 and the width to 300. And then set the pinning to vertical edges. And this will add wiggle to our line. And then simply we can take this layer, duplicate it, and then randomly adjust the width and height to be a little bit different from our first uh, variation. Then we'll continue to duplicate this and change the settings so we can have variations and we'll do this a couple of times. Now we have some lines to help spruce up our very simple title animation. All right, so moving forward, I wanna talk about adding details to our scene in the form of particles. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I wanna show you just a couple. So create yourself a solid layer, and we have a few effects that we can choose from underneath the simulation menu. For example, you can choose CC Starburst. And with this effect, you can increase the scatter and decrease the size and adjust the speed to a low amount. And you'll have very simplistic particles floating in your scene. However, instead of using those particles, I wanna have these nice floating circles. So instead of using that effect, I'm just gonna use CC Bubbles. We'll set the shading type to none, and we can adjust the amplitude to 100, and we'll set the frequency to 0.3 so the circles will move a little slower. All right, so all we need to do is take this layer, duplicate it, and then we'll set the track mat of the bottom particle layer to the top new particle layer. And then make sure you invert the mat right here, and you set the bubble size to 4.5. And now we have these really cool floating circle particles. A great motion graphic effect that I love applying to very basic text or graphics is being able to cut it up and kind of make it three-dimensional. You can take a title or graphic, you can pre-compose it if you want, but I'm simply gonna grab the pen tool and just draw out a mask kind of like this to cut it up. And if you want, you can add multiple cuts uh, to your title or graphic. Make sure your masks are set to add and then duplicate your layer. Set your bottom layer mask to both to subtract, just like this. So then we have our original graphic back in place. Then we'll grab our top layer and go to effect perspective and select a drop shadow. We'll set the direction to 180 degrees. I'll increase the opacity and then we'll duplicate our drop shadow effect. I'll then increase the softness to about 30-ish and then we'll increase the distance by a touch as well. And feel free to continue to increase the opacity to make that even more impactful. And if you absolutely want, you can duplicate one more time and change the direction this way if we can feel the cut here at the top. And I'll lower the settings tremendously on this duplicate so it won't be so noticeable, but we'll have a, that extra drop shadow detail. All right, so then all we need to do is animate all the opacity that we affected from their current value all the way down to 0%. This way, the drop shadows will fade into their final positions like this. Now we'll make both of our title layers 3D layers. We'll grab the first layer and hit PR on keyboard for position. We'll add a keyframe at zero seconds and move forward and then increase the Z value. So the top part of our layer will kind of move forward in Z space. So that should be set to a negative value. And now we're getting this very nice separation. And then I'll quickly create a camera layer and I'll go to our transform settings and now right click on position and click separate dimensions. I'll all click the stopwatch for X position and do a wiggle. Open parenthesis two comma 400. And this will show off the 3D depth of our title. So creating this type of content is fun, but obviously takes a bit of time. So we just released a new pack of visual templates here for After Effects in Premiere Pro. As you can see, we can browse and import any of these templates. Then we can update the imported graphic and even add more templates to create a unique piece of work. So be sure to check the links in the description below to create awesome projects within moments. And if you pick up anything, you'll be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. All right, so this is coming together, but we're still missing some very important details, and that is actually the background. So a lot of people like to use solid color backgrounds, but I have a really cool technique that's very subtle, but makes your backgrounds so amazing. So I have this stock image of a mountain, but please feel free to experiment with different types of landscape images because you can make some really cool backgrounds and we'll blend it in there so it looks natural. So we'll bring this underneath everything, looks terrible. But then we'll go to layer new solid. We'll just call it color. And then we'll go to effect generate and we'll grab a gradient ramp. Since I want a dark palette, I'll make sure that the other color here is set to a very dark gray color. And I'll place this above our image. 
and I'll set the opacity of the solid down to about 80%. And then for our original image, I'll go to effect color correction and I'll tint it out so this way I'll be black and white. And one thing I love doing is always going to layer, new adjustment layer, and then going to effect noise and grain and adding a noise effect and setting up to about 12 to 24%. So now we have this nice but silent background that no one can be mad at you for except for those, you know, few picky clients. All right, so we've gone really creative with the graphics, but one thing that we've done to our project is kind of ruin the balance of it. So to bring balance to the force of what we've created, uh, we can add some side graphics here at the top, which will help balance out our image. And the reason why we don't necessarily have balance is because of these line graphics down here. So adding a little something at the top will make a difference. So I can come here and type out a title or whatever. You know, this is where we're getting creative with titles, but you still need to make sure that is relatable to the content you're creating. So just don't type out anything. And more importantly, when you're adding multiple titles, go ahead and add variation to it as well by changing up the fonts. And make sure you turn on title action save so you can perfectly balance this here in the corner of your project. So feel free to add your titles however you see fit. You also don't have to just use titles. Or you can add in other cool graphics and icons. So always be thinking about how you can take techniques like these and apply it to your future projects. <laughs>